like all utilities, we've had a lot of major storms. Uh, really, they are more prevalent here in the last couple of years. You know, we've had storms throughout the history of, of, of the companies, but they seem to be happening more frequently uh, and being more widespread. Central Hudson has experienced the four worst storms in the history of the company by customer count in the past three years. The customers want reliability. Uh, they want it in storms and they want it on a, on a sunny day. What the industry has seen over the past few years is more storms and more storms at a higher level of severity. And if that's going to continue, that's a game changer for us. We need to figure out better ways uh, to deal with that and keep our systems up and running for our customers. We're looking at hardening technologies that we can use to make the system itself more resilient and less likely to be impacted by those storms, vegetation management, things we can do to the overhead structures, where we can underground to make the system more resilient. Then the second part is how we respond and get the system back in after it's been out. So we're doing some tests that are what I'll call non-typical type of impacts where we try to mimic a tree falling into a line, for example, and look at what's breaking, how it's breaking, In each line, in each phase conductor, and in the third-party uh, attachment wire, we placed load cells that measured the amount of force that the pole and the conductors are being subjected to. You can see in slow motion video, you'll see a mechanical wave traveling down the line as the tree hits it. And we can actually see that on our instrumentation by measuring that force through our load cells you take that video and you actually line it up with the force measurement and that tells us a lot about who's giving where when how, how that energy is being dissipated right now we're at the phase where we're doing the baselines we're seeing what's making things break the part that's I think is going to be really important going forward is how do we take that baseline information and learn what those thresholds are so that we can make sure we're building our system for those, for those thresholds. When that weight drops, it's gonna pull on that middle pole. It goes from the weight up to a pulley over to that sling on that pole. Three, two, one. What happened was the third party attachment connection actually came free during the testing, which allowed that entire pole to bend about. It didn't break, and it was interesting to see how much uh, force the pole could take and not, not break. The interesting thing is the clamp gave way as easily as it did. I didn't expect that. I was thinking the pole would break under that kind of test. What we just saw was the effect of joint use and what happens when an impact hits on the joint use that can break off the top of the pole. So very much interest since a lot of our poles do have joint users and lets us better design strengths on the poles. We're looking at, of course, ways to make things stronger, but we don't necessarily think that the stronger is always necessarily better because you could make a cross arm stronger, but then that might lead to more poles breaking and same with wires. So we really want to sort of coordinate things so that when things break, that it's as easy as possible for crews to put things back together. Anytime we come to an EPRI facility and we can see this thing, uh, see testing going on, and at the same time have roundtable discussion with other utility members is pretty beneficial. We're going to be collecting analysis from prior storm events to try to draw a correlation between where trees are and where the damage is. In a forum like this, you get the information, but you also have an opportunity to ask questions around the edges of that information. So it's one thing to, to read a white paper and, and try to figure out how you might apply that at your utility. But when, you, when you're sitting across the table and you've got 20 minutes to just chat through the different ways in which it's being applied and what maybe some of the constraints might be, and the opportunity to probe and ask questions, I think that's where you get most of the benefit. This workshop has been phenomenal with that opportunity to share information and not only just share the ideas that I had coming into the workshop but in talking with other utilities you actually build on each other's ideas and come up with something even better.
So that collaboration's been wonderful. I think the stage was set well by the Upri people to encourage that interchange. So everybody was willing to talk and put things out on the table. And, and you get the best information that way. It was very free-flowing information and a lot of discussions, both during the formal sessions and through the informal sessions and dinner breaks, things of that nature. What's been interesting for me is to see the different failure modes of the equipment and uh, firsthand uh, simulate some of the conditions that our equipment's subjected to in the field. The most exciting one uh, has been dropping a pole across the line to act like a tree or to uh, represent a tree to see exactly what was going to break. We're able to see equipment failing real time and simulate conditions that you wouldn't normally see in the field. You would see the after effects, but you wouldn't actually see the damage occurring. We've gotten great feedback from the utilities this week as, as they've seen some of the different tests and test setups. We've taken what we've learned so far from the tests and we've uh, sort of mapped out a test plan for further development of options to improve resiliency on overhead lines. The resiliency work is kind of an adjunct to our traditional reliability work and asset management work. We work on underground research. Trying to reduce the cost of underground is a big part of the resiliency effort. We work on overhead structures in our base distribution programs, looking at new technologies that can improve and harden those structures, ties right into our base programs. We look at vegetation management and the strategies there and the practices of our, our members for, for dealing with, with outages. So this is a very good very closely linked to our, our base research programs anyway, but it has a, a specific focus over the next three years to try to, to really nail down some specific approaches for resiliency and then especially how to optimize the investments. So looking at all, all we can learn about the technologies and being able to plug that into an economic optimization tool to decide on what to actually invest in. I think with the horsepower that's been put behind this from the utilities and the EPRI staff, there's going to be discoveries. Then it's going to be up to all of us to figure out how to use those and to work with the manufacturers on new product development possibly uh, to use them to our best advantage. So there's going to be good stuff coming. With such large systems, uh, we, we need to determine the cost benefit so that we can determine how far do we go with, with the different types of resiliencies that, that there are. Some things I'm sure we'll do across the boards and other things we're going to have to target to our worst performing areas. None of us think that we're going to be able to prevent every outage, but how do we make it so that we can respond to those events as best as we can?